Ladies, gents, and gentle people, this set is the epitome of trust the process because I did not think it was gonna work. Why, hello there. Welcome to this entry of the nail journal. I'm in a surprisingly good mood, probably because I'm doing nail art for the first time in a long time. Nothing crazy today. Well, I say that. I've got these like little disco situation, disco ball things that I bought to do my friend's nails, but we went in a different direction, so I still have lots of them. So I wasn't sure which colour to go with, so I mulled it over whilst I went ahead with my prep and applying my tips. So I pre-prepped my tips and I just kind of etched the uh, cuticle area and just showing you there what that looks like so that they sit flush at my cuticle. These aren't the new generation uh, apre tips, so I still have to do this. Yeah, I mean, I still do it with the new generation ones. I mentioned I got the almond shape, the almond medium shape. This is the sculpted stiletto in the length long, I believe, in the long length. <laughs> anyway, just etching the inside so you can see there, prepping the nail to apply. I'm going to be placing this little lamp on top of my like acetone pump bottle just because I couldn't be bothered to like plug in my other little lamp and I was like it's already there let me just do it this way so I'm just seeing here whether this is a good angle and I was comfortable with it so yeah went ahead and applied the gel to the tips and started applying them one by one I used the etch from nail order and then like the etch liquid and then this is the extend gel from nail order as well it's pretty similar to the Apre Extend Gel, nothing very different other than it's less expensive. And this is a British brand, so you can use whatever gel you're most comfortable with if you want to follow along with this uh, video. And yeah, so I'm just applying my, my nails one by one, flash curing for 30 seconds before I put my whole hand into my bigger lamp for a 60 second cure. Once that was done, I decided to take the points off the tips to make them into a uh, kind of sculpted uh, coffin, would you say? Ballerina? I don't really know. I feel like they look more like ballerina than they do coffin. That's just my personal opinion. But anyway, <laughs> just taking the points off these completely out of shot. Well, not completely. Better than my usual out of shot. But um, yeah, I just neatened up the... Uh, edges of each tip and then um, I did that with my I think with the 180 side of my 100 by 180 and then I finished with a little buffer block with the like less coarse side just to like clean that up Then I grabbed my duster brush to get rid of any residue from underneath my nail and top of my nail and then we're just gonna do the last step in my kind of tip application prep like process which is grab the, the top coat and I'm just going to put it underneath the nail. We're going to be doing a clear tip today. So I've done this slowly and neatly, even though this video is step, uh, sped up, I think times 1.5. Um, but I really took my time with these because I wanted to come, wanted them to come out as neat and clean as possible. If you want to follow along with this video and you want to wear these for a longer period of time, I'd recommend etching the underside of the nail and then applying the top coat. I was not keeping them on for long, so I didn't bother doing all that. Next up, I'm grabbing my No Wipe uh, Silver Molten Chrome Gel Paint, whatever you want to call it, um, from Madame Glam. And you can use whatever brand of Molten Chrome Liquid Chrome Gel Paint, whatever. <laughs> Literally, this stuff has so many names. I could just use the name that's on the bottle or on the tub or on the pot. Guys, I'm clearly in a whimsical mood today, but you you get you get where I'm going with this. Anyway, I grabbed my um, my ombre brush and I just kind of started diffusing this. Now, if you're wondering why on earth are you doing this? I mean, it looks cute, but why? If we're going to be doing Desco ball nails, I'm doing this because I decided to keep the free edge on most of my nails, and I figured if I go in with like a sparkly polish that matches whatever color I go with. And at this point, you can probably guess I decided to go with the silver ones instead of the like multicolored ones. Um, that it just wouldn't cover my nails as well. I didn't want, I didn't want it to be. I didn't want the free edge to be visible. So this was just me taking extra precaution. You don't have to do this, but I wanted to come out as clean as possible. So that's why I did that. 
Then I grabbed this Platinum Silver Polish from D&D. Fast becoming like a brand that I really like for gel polishes. Like the colors are really nice and pigmented. And if you're ever looking for swatches for these, um, Karis Nail Art, I'll um, link her in the description, her Instagram account. She does a lot of swatches for D&D and it's actually got me really into the brand because you can see how nice and pigmented their polishes are. So I did two thin layers of this polish and cured it for 60 seconds each. This is the second one I'm doing here. You can see how nice and glittery this polish is. Would be a really nice polish for like holiday man uh, manicures and holiday nail art um, or Christmas, whatever you want to call it. But I mean, it's March, it's still cold. So why the hell not, you know? So after I cured the two coats, I decided to go in with the Kiara Sky Builder Gel. I'm just following... Um, a tutorial I saw ages ago for these. If I can find it, I will either show it somewhere or I will link to it in the description. But basically the person did, um, she, they didn't do the silver underneath, but they just did two coats of like a glittery silver. And then they did um, a thin layer of builder gel and then added in these little square things and then builder gel top coat. So that's pretty much what I'm gonna be doing. But of course, I just decided to leave the tip's clear because I thought it would be nicer. So I didn't really know how to start this. Um, later in the video, you'll see that I use like anchor um, embellishments like in the middle of the nail and start from there. But for my thumb, I wasn't really sure how to go about it because I don't think I ever actually saw in the tutorial how the person started their pattern, like their disco ball pattern. So I just, I just kind of had fun with it. But yeah, that's all I'm doing now. I just put a little bit of the Builder Gel on my like ring palette and I've just put that on the brush so that I can pick up these little embellishment things. I don't know, sequins? Like little, little sequins? Let's call them that. Disco ball sequins. So you'll see me doing this in the video on multiple occasions. Basically, some of them just aren't like fully mirrored. Some of them are half mirror, half clear. Some of them are completely clear. So any of, the, any of the ones that I picked up that weren't consistent with the ones I had on my nail bed, I just laid them on my ring palette and um, yeah, just continued. So this is the thumb all done. Um, at this stage, I... Um, I basically, I cured for 60 seconds and then I was like, do I cover the whole nail in Builder Gel and then do top coat? But then I was worried because if you've ever worked with Builder Gel to like um, level out a surface to like build an apex, you may have noticed you can get like teeny tiny bubbles. Now they're not like a huge, they're not like a big deal, but I was like, maybe if I just cover the body of like the nail where the disco ball pattern is, and cure that and then go in with top coat, then I'll still get like a nice clear tip, which is what I ended up doing. However, it was, it just, it took so long to get that like perfect apex with the top coat. And I feel like it would have been easier with the builder gel because it doesn't move around as much, it's thicker. So you don't have to use as much product, but yeah. So I did it, I got it done. Here it is. It looks nice. It looks neat. But I decided that for the rest of the nails, I was just going to do the full nail with the builder and then just do like a nice thin to medium layer of top coat. So repeating the process here, but of course I'm going to speed it up so that I don't bore you guys to death. Um, but yeah, just, you know, drawing that small line again to cover my free edge. You can see it more clearly here because most of my free edge are broken off of my thumb. But of course, my thumb actually has a longer nail bed than the rest of my nails. Um, so this ended up actually looking pretty much similar, except for my pinky and my index, which was slight, like slightly smaller, but I wasn't I wasn't too bothered on it being completely uniform. So but what do you guys think? I actually quite like this as it is. I would I would I would wear this. I'd maybe add something, but I like it. But of course, that's not what we're doing today. So I proceeded to add the glittery polish. And here is the second layer because I'm just all about, you know, just bringing you guys in and out and not boring you. <laughs> um, so yeah, I went ahead and covered the um, body of the nail with 
two layers of the glittery polish and then I did my index and my middle finger off camera and then I decided to show you guys doing my uh, ring finger and my pinky finger and as you can see there were plenty of stray sequins so that's you know that's them sitting on my ring palette but these are the anchor sequins that I mentioned just putting them in the middle of the nail something I picked up when I did my index and my middle finger so I just lay those down and then I work on two fingers at a time and the Kiara Sky Builder Gel is pretty decent it doesn't move around too much so it allowed me to work in these now it took me a total of two hours to do this one hand now I like to take my time so that's probably why it took me two hours but I imagine if I was doing this on someone I could probably stretch it to maybe three hours to do both hands some people might be quicker than me but yeah um here's an example of one that was like randomly half like vertically half mirror or chrome or silver and then half clear so I'm just showing you guys um, that I just removed it with my like pointy um, tweezers and then continued. But yeah, I mean, you guys get the gist, so I'm just going to carry on and then pop in towards the end. So after curing for 60 seconds, and I did the same for the pointer finger and the middle finger before moving on to the last two fingers, um, I just shut this because I knew I was going to knock it over and get them everywhere, <laughs> um, and then proceeded to grab the BT Art Box Builder Gel to do my Builder Gel layer. Now as I mentioned on my thumb, I just covered the body and not the full nail, but for the rest of the nails I just decided to do the full nail, which I'll see, you'll see me doing now. It just, it made sense in regards to building the right structure and I didn't have to go in with lots of top coat. And especially if you're working on a client and you don't have that silver underneath and it's just clear, your customer or your client or, you know, whoever you're doing this on, if you're not doing it on yourself, might feel like the burn, you know, the, the, the nail lamp burn because there's a little bit of visible nail there and it's a pretty thick layer of top coat. So I think going in with Builder Gel and then top coat might, might prevent that. Or they might not feel it at all. Just something to keep in mind either way. So just turning my hand over here just so I can self-level the Builder Gel. I do this pretty much all the time, even with my top coat. And I'm just showing you, look at that apex, nice and clean. You wouldn't even know that it's two different sections with two different thicknesses. And that's kind of what you want to, I think that's what you want to kind of aim for, a nice clean apex. So once I was pleased with that, made sure all like the side walls and the corners and stuff were covered, no blind spots. I went ahead and cured that for 60 seconds. Sometimes I do a 90 second cure, but most of the time it's 60 seconds. And here are the nails looking so pretty already, but we're going to finish with top coat. And then I'll show you guys the, well, I'll let you guys know my final thoughts because it's the first time I'm using the glittery polish and the little like disco ball embellishment. So I'll talk about that at the end and then show you guys the final look um, under flash, which is fun.
and here are the nails all done normally i'd grab my um, nail file and just crispen up the shape but i was kind of scared to in case i like scratch something so i was like yeah let's leave it it's still pretty sharp it's not you know i was happy with them and they were still pretty clear you can still see some bubbles there's even one of the little embellishments there that has like some scratches it wasn't even the bubbles it was just some scratches that were on there so yeah you can't win you can't win them all um was also just wanted to show most of my process in there so i'm just cleaning off my brushes using a mix of alcohol and acetone and then i just use my fingers to kind of dry it off and also just like transfer some of the oils from my fingers as well just on the brushes before putting them away sometimes i'll put a little bit of cuticle oil on my brushes if they look like they're drying out but of course i haven't used these for like over a month so yeah doing the same thing here generally i just use alcohol or an alcohol wipe but because i used metallic silver i prefer to just give them a good clean as for the silver platinum gel polish from dnd i mean as you can see it's gorgeous i like it we'll probably use it again and for these uh disco ball sequins I'll show you that the one on the left is the one I hadn't opened and the one on the right is the one I use. So not bad for a full hand. But yeah, I like them. And that's pretty much it, guys. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I hope I'll see you in my next one. And here is the final look.